Если перечисленных мер будет недостаточно, Российская Федерация разместит на Западе и на юге страны современные ударные системы вооружений, обеспечивающие огневое поражение европейского компонента ПРО. Any major warfare involving the USA and Russia would necessarily involve a thermonuclear option and therefore involve the possibility of the end of human civilization. Under these current existential circumstances, the only option available if we want to survive is to turn ourselves in precisely the opposite direction and accelerate the rapid development and progress of the human species while making nuclear war itself obsolete. And in times when we can harness the power of the sun, we don't go to war, we go to space. Over a month ago, it was proposed by leading circles in Russia that instead of going to war, we collaborate around a program for the strategic defense of the Earth. The planet from missile this program would be based on the same strategic principle as Lyndon LaRouche's SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative, adopted by President Reagan in March of 1983. That we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies. I know this is a formidable... The point is that you can't eliminate thermonuclear weapons by eliminating thermonuclear weapons. Instead, you eliminate the potential danger of their use by changing the geometry of the entire system. In order to avoid a war between nations, all nations must ally against the common enemy of mankind, the oligarchical principle, to overcome the enforced backwardness that makes our species willfully blind to the true threats of our existence. In the context of the ongoing Russia-US deadlock over missile defense, Moscow proposed the SDE in order to not only guard collaboratively against missile threats, but to work together to form a single integrated system which would be targeted against possible threats to Earth coming from space, including asteroids, comet fragments, and other alien bodies, a system which should be capable of both monitoring the space and destroying any dangerous objects as they approach our planet. This comes on top of a similar Russian proposal that was made earlier this year for a global monitoring system for the detection of earthquake precursors, severe weather, and natural disasters called the IGMAS, the International Global Natural and Industrial Emergency Aerospace Monitoring System. Like the SDE, the IGMAS would be a cooperative system among many nations in the interest of saving countless human lives. The recent transit of asteroid 2005YU55 between the orbits of the Earth and Moon on November 9th of this year has brought to the fore of public consciousness the threat of a near-Earth object impact with our planet. It was the closest known passage of an asteroid this big, although the same asteroid passed us by even closer in 1976, remaining undetected. How many more dangerous near misses have we had before the technology was developed to identify these things? And with such grave consequences as the potential for extinction of the human species, if one of these hits the Earth, how should this threat be dealt with? Well, first, we will need a much more comprehensive detection and early warning monitoring system. This would include space telescopes, not just in Earth orbit, but on the Moon and Mars, parked in stationary orbit at all the Lagrange points, as well as in orbit around the outer planets like Saturn and Jupiter. Because so many of these rogue space rocks are incredibly dark, darker than charcoal, they're difficult to see with optical telescopes, and we are relatively blind to threats which may be hurtling towards us at thousands of miles per hour at this very moment. The early detection systems are crucial for any deflection attempts, because they must be made far in advance of the object's approach to Earth. Any attempt to deflect an asteroid at the last minute would require deflection by some 30 to 50 degrees, demanding impossibly huge levels of power and thrust. But if we were able to reach an asteroid which is on an impact trajectory while it's still millions of miles away, say, in the vicinity of Mars orbit, then we only have to change the trajectory by a fraction of a degree, which will require much less power for the act of deflection. This will require the immediate development of fusion propulsion rocket systems, if we are to have any hope of reaching such distant objects quickly enough.
Once an impact trajectory object has been detected, what do we do? There are many proposals for what to do with these asteroids. We could try to smash something into it, to either blow it up or scoot it over, or add a swarm of devices onto it that would start excavating material from it to change its mass, and therefore its trajectory. Nuclear explosions could be triggered either at a distance from the object, on the surface of the object, or after penetration of the object, which would cause a deflection of the trajectory of the asteroid. The asteroid could be partially fragmented or pulverized using a nuclear bunker buster. We could also take advantage of trapped gases that exist inside some asteroids and release them to create a sort of natural rocket propulsion effect. In a method nicknamed the gravity tractor, a robotic probe is sent out to ride along with the asteroid. The probe's small amount of gravity would exert a slight tug on the asteroid as the two travel together. And over months or years, this gravity tractor method would pull the asteroid into a different, more benign orbit. Once we realize that humans really can take control over and steer these space rocks, all of a sudden man's greatest enemy seems to be much less frightening. We may even be able to domesticate these asteroids and turn them into our allies. A recent Chinese proposal suggests that it would not be very difficult to nudge one of these asteroids into Earth orbit. There, it would be more accessible to study, mine, and even transform into a laboratory. The value of mining asteroids for base and precious metals is hard to challenge. Take for example the asteroid Eros, which is not even a very large asteroid. It's been estimated to contain more aluminum, gold, silver, and zinc than have ever been excavated or ever could be excavated from the upper layers of the Earth's crust. And there are many other asteroids out there with a similar composition. While the consequences of a giant rock impacting our planet are rather obvious to realize, there are many more less tangible energetic factors that are influencing our planet from afar, which also threaten human lives. Local weather effects and seismic activity, from simple thunderstorms to catastrophic floods, earthquakes, and volcanoes, are inseparable from our solar and galactic environment that we must address with a space-based strategic defense system. Mankind is now entering a new domain, where we must realize both our vulnerability and our increasing responsibilities in a constantly changing galaxy. This is an evolutionary imperative. Take the case of great earthquakes, which are now increasing in frequency. There are an abundance of earthquake precursors that demonstrate a relationship with the space far above the depths of the Earth where this seismic activity seems to originate. There are unique cloud and storm formations associated with earthquakes. Strange lights occur in the sky, anomalous emissions of very low and extremely low frequencies, and releases of heat and infrared radiation from the ground. The electromagnetic phenomena associated with earthquakes are not merely confined to the space between the lithosphere and the ionosphere, but have been observed as far as the Van Allen belts in the form of energetic particle flux variations. This radiation belt is an integral part of the Earth's magnetic field, though it exists hundreds to thousands of miles above the Earth's surface. Furthermore, there has been demonstrated a correlation between solar flares and coronal mass ejections that occur before or after large earthquakes. Japanese researchers recently identified a correlation between the 11-year sunspot cycle and the occurrence of large earthquakes. There is such an abundance of these precursors, from the behavior of pigs and frogs to variations in the magnetosphere, that what remains for us to do is to put together a comprehensive system to triangulate the precursors and begin forecasting. The strategic defense system that must be developed should include an array of instrumentation that measures various aspects of the electromagnetic spectrum to monitor earthquake precursors. But we should also go beyond the Earth with our defense system. Are earthquakes merely Earth-bound? What about Mars quakes? We should set up seismographs on other planets to see if there is a broader pattern within the solar system as a whole 
which correlates with the recent rise in great earthquakes which we're experiencing here at home. The seismographs that were placed on the moon during the Apollo project, which have since been taken down, demonstrated that most of the moonquakes were occurring on the side of the moon that faced not the sun, but the fixed stars, implying some force affecting them that was coming from outside of our solar system. We must fully populate the electromagnetic environment of the solar system with an extended sensorium of apparatuses to aid us in what we cannot see with our biological senses and develop new technologies to see parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that we don't even currently know exist. The strategic defense of the human species is, and always has been, the proper role of the military. Today, our military function must be transformed into a space function that subsumes and supplants the current threat of war and makes war itself obsolete with a space-based defense system. We defend humanity as a whole because we're important to the universe. We are the only species known to us with the creative powers to actively improve and develop the universe. And in that way, we are the only potentially immortal species. Extinction causing impacts from asteroids and extreme weather have threatened every species which has ever lived on this planet. But man is the only species endowed with the power to prevent such catastrophes and to voluntarily decide our own destiny. Were the United States to eject Obama and to reciprocate and develop both of these offers which have recently come from Russia, we would not only avert the danger for war in the short term, but we could eliminate the reason for humanity to ever go to war. Peace is not the negation of conflict. It's an active commitment among peoples for the benefit of the all. We must push the frontiers of science for the common aims of mankind, as mankind's creative nature pushes us to do so. <laughs>